So, Harold, pivoting back to you, how does this collaboration work in a, in a practical sense? Is it somebody sits down and writes a chapter, somebody else writes the next chapter, and you go on around Robin, or everybody does their own individual draft? Uh, well, you know, it's interesting. So, like I said, initially, Craig and I pinned so much together um, uh, before we met Theo. And then, of course, it all it, it changed when we when we um, when Theo really brought Kingston's voice forward uh, through the first person. We, you know, would share and talk a lot. Probably, we would talk for hours and hours and hours on the phone, <laughs> and just kind of like making sure we all kind of like really uh, were saying like, oh, you know, that's a cool beat. That's we would kind of talk things out. And then um, uh, I would say Craig and Theo uh, would pin some stuff, and I would throw some stuff through a Slack channel. We Slack became part of our life, where <laughs> where we shared pages. Um, and then uh, again, there's the 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 trust factor again of, of like saying, okay, great, I threw out some ideas. It might be rough, you know, but at least uh, I know that when it goes to Craig and Theo and vice versa, that it's going to kind of get cleaned up and we're going to find the voice and then we're going to kind of edit it together. So it kind of keeps going through this kind of like Taurus of a of a cycle to kind of like make sure that we all kind of have a little say in it. Uh, even though I'm, they're writing some words that I may not have written, it's still part of my story because we all kind of like started and talked it out, talked all the beats out and we share, we share this. And I would say that's like when I, when, I, when I can't emphasize enough the trust factor in that uh, you you know that you don't want to get in the way of like the flow of things and you know that you can trust your other writing partners to kind of like to, 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 to nail something for you and or with you and then you also know that they'll listen to you when you need to make a change or so it's really kind of like we never got in each other's way. We really just kind of like worked together and kind of like made sure we kind of found a flow. And I, I would just say that flow was really the way to really practically get it done. Well, so was there, um, well, let me uh, come back to you, Theo, because you're coming in a little bit like the uh, the new person. I mean, we, we heard Craig and Harold's uh, When Harry Met Sally origins uh, <laughs> moving across the, the, the country together. Uh, and then you come in, and you're you're the third person. So what what's that like coming to an established group and bringing in your new perspective? And then also uh, something I was looking for is where does this start to feel like I'm reading three different authors and I couldn't identify that? Uh, it it's remarkably consistent throughout. Like oh, this does somewhere in there. You guys have created uh, a single voice, a single narrative. Maybe the first person perspective helps with that. I'm not sure. Um, so how did you have any hard and fast rules of okay? Where only every every paragraph can only be this long or shorter because I noticed a lot of white space on the page. How how do you make sure that there's a unity and also how what is it like to come into an established group? Yeah, it's it's interesting. Like uh, I was, you know, something I was wary of kind of going into it. Like, man, these guys are 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 so close and they've known each other for so long. How am I going to get? How am I going to sort of fit in on this? But um, man, I'm still waiting for it to be an issue. <laughs> it's, it's, they've they've just been. Um, I don't know. Part of it is probably they're just, you know, just I don't know. Maybe they're pros, or they're just like really just nice guys and easy to collaborate with and easygoing. Um, I think, you know, one of the one of the things that always impressed me was we would have these crazy brainstorming sessions, and like. You know, no matter how, if, you know, if one of us didn't react well to an idea, man, we just moved on. You know, there was there was very little like, man, I'm sticking to my guns. I know you guys, you know, or, or, or just, you know, sort of defensiveness around a thing or, or, or this or that. It just sort of felt like there was a kind of there was not to overuse trust, but a belief in the, that that we were all that this that we could all something. The best ideas were something we were all going to really be on board with. So, you know, I think as far as the kind of the continuity and and the voice stuff, you know, it's, it's just they would um, uh, I would they would be giving me pages 
for stuff that was kind of coming up ahead. And, you know, I would just make sure everything felt like it could have been said by the same voice, you know? Um, so, you know, that there was a, you know, there was a lot of rewriting. There was a lot, there was a whole draft of rewriting. We wrote an entire book. <laughs> we basically <They're> lost it. <laughs> there's a whole draft, <laughs> um, which is definitely a lesson that I try to impart on my students that you can never be afraid of rewriting. Um, you know, getting the right idea, in, in you know, you can wind up with a book in half the time you would it would take you to fix a draft that isn't working. You know? um, so. The idea is was is for it to feel effortless when you read it. It was not effortless in the creating of it, but it should certainly feel that way. That was definitely what we were going for. Uh, Craig, can you spill the tea? What what was the issue with the whole draft that you guys wrote? And then uh, did you check it completely, or did you incorporate parts of it? I assume. Well, it's probably a few things. Um, like I remember. We were, Theo, you know, there was this term Theo kept using this, we call it the fetch quest. <laughs> so, you know, that came up a lot. And I, I mean, I think that I would say that that was a part of it, that it started to become episodic, which I think goes back to our kind of TV minds, that you write things. And so, you know, there was a, there was a big thing about, you know, Kingston would, overcome one hurdle and then we'd go to the next hurdle and then the next hurdle, it started to become really episodic. So I think that's why it was bloated. And I think that's why it was, you know, lacking the uh, emotion that Harold talked about is that you just started to kind of feel like you were going through these steps to get to something. Um, and I, I think that's a big thing that we learned um, in this process. And um, that, you know, as, as writers, we we learned that you you have to follow the character and not what the character is doing. So I think that that's what we took into that next draft much much more so. Um, and it became you know it, it it definitely just became so much more compelling and and this and that that you were just really with this kid and that's all that mattered all the time. It's like anything that felt like it was just weeds and we needed to get it out of the way. We just took it out. So we just wanted to be with Kingston and we wanted to be on his journey and we wanted to be in his head and we wanted to know what he was feeling. Um, and anything that wasn't serving that, we, you know, we needed to, we needed to find a better way to, to get there plot wise, you know? 